Hello everyone and welcome back to Football Manager 2018 and the latest part of this experiment where we're taking a look at what would happen if you had the perfect player in the game. Now he is currently 30 years old, that's where we left off last time. All of his statistics still at 20 and he's valued at £80 million with 400 grand a week. Coming into his wages, you can see from his career stats, his goals going up to nearly 30 goals a game, uh, but not quite in these two seasons here, at least in the league. But he is still getting about 40 goals a season, occasionally closer to 50, uh, although that doesn't happen too often. But his average rate is now 9.2 to 9.5, which is quite high uh, for any sort of player in the game, even on one match, let alone spread across an entire Premier League season. It means he's racking up player of the match awards like nobody's business. Um, when we looked at his competition wins last time around, you can see he won the Premier League quite a lot and the FA Cup quite a lot. He had a bit of success with England as well, winning the European International League. Um, and he's won the Champions League with Arsenal runners-up uh, in the 2031 season, but he's definitely won it before then. 2029, and I think he's won it a time before then as well. Another runners-up there. He's finished runners-up in the Champions League an awful, awful lot. But he does at least have a Champions League medal to his name to Go with that Premier League medal too. The real question is, can he get success with England? Because he is now 30 years old. He's getting on quite a bit. Um, but that shouldn't really impact his statistics at all. Obviously, he's got 166 goals in 166 games for England. A one-to-one -one ratio there, which is pretty phenomenal. And somebody pointed out as well, um, we originally had him just as a striker, but he's also developed the ability to play on the wings or in central attack and midfield, which is quite good. So he can play in a lot of places... Uh, places on the pitch he's now a legendary striker and a born leader um, just really got everything going for him so the question is by the age of 35 will he be in a position to really go on and do something special um, we're going to go forward five years today to the age of 35 and then in the last part of this experiment the next part we'll take an overall look at how he did in his career but we'll also just take him to the point of retirement and see if he becomes a manager which is what happened when we did this experiment last year so it'll be interesting to see if he does take up management and you can see that in the next part so make sure to subscribe if you want to see how this player ends his career but right now let's go forward five years and see how he's got on. Well, we are now five years into the future, and while his wages may have gone up by £100,000 a week to cool half a million, he is now just valued at 5.75, which, given his stats, is a little bit ridiculous, uh, because even his physical and natural stats are all up at 20. Uh, so he'd be an absolute steal if you were able to pry him away from Arsenal. But he is still there. He's 35 years old now, um, and he's actually increased his goal-to-game record for England, so hopefully he has achieved some good international success. He's now on 230. 39 goals in 218 games which is just phenomenal um, but, but overall looking quite good for Arsenal I think we want to have a look at his career stats to start with going back over the last five years we're part way through another season at the moment so this is where we left off last time the 32-33 season he got 29 goals, 9.12 rating, a lot of player of the match awards. He had 39 goals overall. The following season, he got 47 goals in all competitions and 52 man of the match awards. Uh, then he got 48 goals, 46 goals and 43 goals. So I think um, the 34-35 season was his highest scoring season um, in his entire career. And he actually got uh, more than a goal a game in all the competitions except for the league. Um, so doing very well there, despite just an 8.99 rating. This season, he got 32 goals and 20 assists, which is a little bit ridiculous in the Premier League there. And he has hit that 33-goal mark for the second time. So definitely doing well in the league. The question is, has he done it in the competitions? Well, this is where we left off last time, and he had won at the FA Cup with Arsenal. He also won the Community Shield with Arsenal in 2032, um, and the Premier League the following year in 2033. Uh, Community Shield winner as well again, and then another Premier League in 2034. Um, another FA Cup as well, so doing the double that season, uh, and the Champions League. So they did the treble Arsenal in 2034, definitely one of his better seasons there. Uh, won the Community Shield the following season, uh, and runner-up in the European Super Cup, won the Club World Cup, and the Carabao Cup, which is something I don't even think he's won before, before taking home another Premier League title, so doing the double there, uh, and the FA Cup as well, so the domestic treble in the bag, but no Champions League. So the following year, he did win the Community Shield again and the Carabao Cup and the Premier League. Uh, but runners-up in the Champions League, so not winning it that season. 
Uh, Community Shield again in the bag. Uh, this is a coming season, or the season just gone. Uh, another Carabao Cup, another Premier League, and a Community Shield as well. So he has now won another Champions League, which is something at least. Um, but it doesn't look like he's done brilliantly for England. Um, and we'll actually have to go and have a look at the England screen if we want to see how he's managed to get on. And you can see here in 2032 season, that's when they went out of the European Championships in the semi-final to Spain, two goals to nil. Uh, the following year, not a lot going on, mostly just the World Cup qualifications. And then in the World Cup, got through the group stage quite well. He was playing in this World Cup as well. Uh, beat Ukraine 3-1 as well. He scored in that game. But then they lost to the USA of all countries in the quarterfinals and were knocked out of the World Cup. He didn't manage to get on the score sheet in that game. He might not have even been playing. That was in front of 94,000 people but he wasn't able to get the goals that could have sent England through to the next round. You can see that in the European League, they didn't do very well drawing with Austria, then losing to Spain. Um, and the following season, just friendlies, which is interesting. It means they must have been hosting the competition the following year. And it looks like they were hosting the European Championship, where they beat Ireland 4-1. Uh, that was at Wembley. They beat... Um, Israel 2-1 at Villa Park of all places, still Giancaldo Jr. playing in this one. Uh, he beat Belgium 2-1 and then in the second round they were beaten 1-0 by Holland on their own turf in England. That's a really disappointing way to go because I think that's probably his last international um, tournament and it means he will not have won anything for England in his career uh, except for the Euro European League which they didn't win that season either. Uh, World Cup qualifications, was he in any of these teams? He was still playing in the World Cup qualifications um, even as far as the end of the 2037 season so he's maybe got one more World Cup in him from the looks of it because he's still banging in goals. Uh, 10.0 rating in pretty much every game there as well. Uh, so you can see he is still playing for his country. But the question is, is he finally going to be able to win the World Cup? It'll be his last chance, surely, at 35, 36 years old he'll be by the time he gets there. Um, so do you think he will win that World Cup? Let me know down in the comments if you think it's something that they can achieve. Uh, we'll have a quick look now just at Arsenal's record. Because Arsenal have been doing very well, winning a lot of Premier League titles recently. You can see their season's nearly perfect, except for going out of the Carabao Cup to Spurs, including doing well in the Champions League, managing to get through. This is the season where we left off last time. Uh, still in the FA Cup at this point, lost to Real Madrid in the first leg of their Champions League uh, tie, but then beat them 3-0 at home to go through. Giancarlo Jr. getting the goal there. They also knocked out Barcelona 2-1 on aggregate, and in the semi-finals of the Champions League, um, they went out on away goals to PSG, despite Jen Caldo Jr. getting a goal. He wasn't able to send them through, but they did win the league that season. The following year, um, if we just stick towards the end of season time here, you can see in the knockout stages, went through comfortably against Sevilla. Uh, also beat Barcelona for the second year in a row, 4-1 there. Uh, beat Manchester United 6-2 on aggregate in the Champions League semi-final. Also beat West Ham 1-0 in the FA Cup final, taking them to two finals, and they won both of them. Southampton 2-0, Jan Caldo Jr. scoring, and City 2-0 in the Champions League. Uh, no goal for Jan Caldo Jr. there, but still doing very, very well. Um, who did they go out of the Carabao Cup to? That's a real question here. Uh, they lost to Southampton there, so they could have done another treble that season, but weren't quite able to. Um, the following year, you can see they did go through in the Carabao Cup semi-finals this time around, um, and they actually won it 2-0 against Manchester United. They knocked Sevilla out of the Champions League. Um, oh no, they were knocked out of the Champions League by Sevilla. 3-2 defeat at home there, really disappointing. Uh, but managed to go through in the FA Cup and won in the final 2-0 there. Gabriel with the goals. Uh, this season, they won the Caribou Cup again 2-0 over Bournemouth. Through against Bayern, 4-2 on aggregate in the Champions League. Through in the FA Cup, beat AC Milan 4-0 at home. 4-0 uh, away, actually, and then drew 2-2 at home, despite having a man sent off very early on. They were already 2-0 up by the 8th minute. Then they had a man sent off. Then it was 2-1 after 10 minutes. What an opening 10 minutes for a game, that is. Um, they went out of the FA Cup to Manchester United, but they did beat Barcelona 6-1. Uh, before losing to Manchester City in the Champions League final. So revenge for City there. 
The following year, you can see again another Carabao Cup 2-1 over Chelsea. They beat Bayern in the Champions League knockout stages and beat Chelsea in the semi-finals of the Champions League. Um, and then were knocked out by City for the second year in a row, this time at the semi-final stage. Um, and that takes us up to the present day where they're doing very, very well in all competitions. Massive winning streak there. It's just about whether they can keep it going even further. But overall, he's doing incredibly well. And if we look at his um, history, Jen Caldo, then you can see here on his biography just how many competitions he has managed to win. You can pause this if you want to have a quick look. So we'll go through it in more detail next time. But a quick look at Arsenal's uh, competitions history will show you the dominance that they're building up. You can see two Champions League titles here, 29 and 34, but a lot of uh, final defeats in 2021, 25, 26, 31 and 36. They could have won seven in the time that Cinkaldo Jr. was at the club. Um, but you can see the Premier League, they have been racking up 21, 25, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, all the way through to 37. So that's a run going back to 2027. They missed the 2026 season, but they won 10 titles in a row in the Premier League now, which shows just how dom dominant they have been. And when you look at the past winners here, it is all Arsenal. City would have had an era of dominance if it weren't for Arsenal having an era of dominance. It's been switching between them ever since the 22-23 season. So it's a two-horse race very much in the Premier League these days between Manchester City and Arsenal, but Arsenal definitely pipping it thank to, thanks to Jen Caldo Jr. Uh, you can see they've racked up some more FA Cup wins as well, not an area where Arsenal have struggled historically. Um, and in the Carabao Cup, they have finally managed to get some wins on the board there, but not too many. Uh, and a European Super Cup in there as well to join the Club World Championship, which they've now won twice. Um, somebody did want to have a look at the senior squad for Arsenal and see just how strong it is. You can see here, obviously, Jan Caldo Jr. now, because he's old, isn't anywhere near the top. But if we just run through some of their big players, you can see they've got another great striker in Matisse Charlier, uh, a Belgian who's 28 years old and doing absolutely brilliantly for them. Um, this, then you've also got another Belgian, Steph Clement, who is another striker as well. Uh, so no lack of options up front for Arsenal. Um, decent right back there, he's 32 years old, and yet he's worth £27.5 million. Pounds. Um, I just a quick run through these players, really. You can see a lot of them with really, really high valuations there, including Gabriel, who's got quite a lot of goals for them. Um, he's worth £57 million. Pounds. Plays on the left wing as well. Um, but if we go back to the Arsenal screen, then you can see all of the players here are well over £40 million. They built an absolute empire at the club. And if we have a quick look at the transfer history, um, you can see £93 million spent not much a year before, 8729 They're knocking up nearly £100 million on average, I would say, every single season, which is where the dominance has come in. Giancaldo Jr. took them to the next level, but the financial power of the club has taken them even further. Uh, so I'm not really sure what else to have a look at here. We've kind of looked at most of the main things. You can see Jen Caldo Jr. also captain of Arsenal, but he's had an incredible career, which we'll look at in more detail in the final part of this experiment. We're also going to have a look at his final maybe two, three, four seasons that he has left, um, and we'll look at his retirement when he does finally retire and whether he decides to become a manager or a coach, because if he does become a manager, we can do a separate experiment where we make him a perfect manager and see what he manages to achieve um, in world football. So there's a lot to look forward to. So do drop a like on this video if you want that final part. If you'd rather I went on to another experiment, do let me know. You don't need to drop a like on the video. I can always just move straight on to something else. But let me know with a like if you would like to see the end part of this experiment. You can also subscribe to the channel. That video will be up in a couple of days time. Uh, there'll be a Newcastle video out tomorrow for those of you that enjoy those. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter using the link in the description. You can support me on Patreon as well if you would feel so inclined. Um, all of that good stuff down in the description. But until next time, see ya!